So the cardiac cycle, this is another way to look at how the heart beats. It's very similar to the pressure volume loop, so it's just a different way. So this blue line here is looking at ventricular pressure. Gray line here is uh, atrial pressure. And then finally, this black line is the aortic pressure. So we're going to start during diastole, late diastole, where we have our left atrium and left ventricle. And the valves are open and the left ventricle is being filled up with blood. Okay, so blood is filling, blood is filling. So now the left ventricular pressure is going up. And it's going to go up uh, until the point that it exceeds left atrial pressure, at which point these valves will close. Um, so now the left ventricular pressure exceeds left atrial pressure, mitral valves close. And this is the point where diastole finishes. And because diastole is finished, the next step then is for the left ventricle to contract, which it will do. It contracts and you can see the pressure goes up. And the pressure is going to increase, increase until the point where left ventricular pressure exceeds uh, the aortic pressure. At which point these valves will open up, the aortic valves, and blood will be able to flow out. And so this is what happens. And the pressure is going to keep going up because your left ventricle is still pushing and squeezing, increasing pressure. Until the point where you, you lose enough blood, enough blood goes into the aorta, the pressure goes down. And the pressure goes below the aortic valve, uh, aortic pressure. At which point our aortic valves will close again. Now this is the point where we have relaxation of the left ventricles. It's going to relax until the mitral valves open again. So the mitral valves are going to open because left atrial pressure is now again greater than left ventricular pressure. And I want to point out during this whole time, during our systole, during the point where our left ventricle is contracting, actually all of this, our atrium was filling up again. Okay, remember that mitral valve was closed, so blood was flowing into the left atrium. It was building up in the left atria. And finally, because the left atrial pressure exceeded the left ventricular pressure now, at the end of and at diastole, early diastole, this mitral valve is going to open, and we're going to have blood flowing again, and filling up the left ventricle. And so that's what it's going to do. It's going to slowly fill up the ventricle. It's going to increase in pressure until we restart our cycle. So again, this is um, this is important. It's very important conceptually. You don't have to memorize it, please. I hope you can understand and be able to draw these curves on the left and understand why each valve opens and closes specifically, how the mitral valve and the, a the aortic valve will open and close. And the other thing I want to point out is that the beginning of systole, which is the ventricular contraction, coincides with the QRS complex, which is something that um, we'll talk about later with the EKG lectures. But the QRS complex is where the ventricular contraction occurs. Now the next thing I want to go into is the venous waveform. This is a jugglist venous pulse. So this is basically looking at the venous pressure in the jugular veins. And this reflects pressure in the right atrium because the jugular veins will, will drain into right atrium. And now we so let's look at the pressure in the right in the jugular veins. So remember we're at the end of diastole and we see a little bump here. This pressure goes up because of, let's see, A is right atrial contraction. The right atrium is going to contract to push that little, that last little bit of blood into the, the right ventricle. Okay. And then eventually we see that the, um, the right ventricular pressure will exceed the right atrial, the, um, the right atrial pressure. Uh, see, now we're looking at the right side of the heart, and this graph was the left side, but it's very, it's pretty much the same thing going on. So that tricuspid valve will now close. So now we're in the right atrium and right ventricle. And that tricuspid valve closes, and it's going to bulge into the right atrium a little bit. And that's what we get here. That C is bulge of the bulge of tricuspid valve, okay? Now the atrium can finally relax. You just finish squeezing. It's going to relax. So that's X. Relax right atria, okay? 
And this is when this remember how I said that this is when uh, our, our valve is closed now tricuspid valve is closed so blood is flowing into the atria and it's not leaving so now this is where we're going to fill up and slowly um, um, we we'll get inflow of blood into the right atrium so that's V inflow of blood okay and that's going to happen all the way until we see again that the, the valve here tries, in this case it's the left side so it's mitral valve but on the right side is the tricuspid valve that's finally going to open and when it opens, then blood, where's blood going to go? It's going to go from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So you're going to empty the right, the right atrium. Now, you might actually get tested on these, all these terms. And it's kind of confusing to remember all these little letters and which, what each letter is each phase. So the way I remember it is X and Y are the ones that have um, where the, 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 the pressure decreases, okay? Remember what X was. X, it, the pressure decreases because the right atria is relaxing. And Y, the pressure decreases because it's actually emptying into the right, the, uh, the right ventricle. So X and Y, and they happen to be in alphabetical order, so that's nice. And then the little bumps in the curve, or ACV, these are also alphabetical order. So those are the bumps in the curve. And then remember, A was with the right atrial contraction. C was that with the bulge of the tricuspid valve. And then finally, um, V was with the um, it basically filling up inflow of blood into the right atria with that tricuspid valve closed. So honestly, I just kind of use these alphabetical order type of thing, X and Y are together. And those are the two decreases. Um, so again, I just want to emphasize the importance of being able to understand this graph because it just tells you what's going on with the heart.